You know, we're going to pop in with y'all on the ground days. Y'all know we even go to the ground to start by saying, you know, thank everybody for coming. And, you know, we're going to start off how we always start off. Y'all know usually we have discussions about friends and, and, and spouses or partners. But today we decided to, you know, have a discussion about being accountable parents. And, you know, we're going to start this off how we always start everything off and asking everybody who's a panelist, the people who are on Facebook that want to comment, we'll read off the comments. But all the panelists, you know, when you hear accountable parenting, what do you think of? What comes to mind? What comes to mind? Can you hear us? Um, yeah, I guess lead, what, what what comes to mind for me is uh, leading by example. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't really live under the under the old saying, "Do as I say, not as I do." You know what I'm saying? Because uh, leadership is about taking the initiative. Yes. So you know what I'm saying? It's, it's about you know your method of teaching, your method of of discipline, and and instilling values. You know what I'm saying? Being accountable to you know making sure that you follow through. You know. Knowing your teaching methods and, and 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 you know also you know what I'm saying you having a standard that that you uphold yourself to, you know what I mean like if you make a mistake, um, concerning the child like maybe you gave them wrong information or, you know what I'm saying you punished them when they didn't deserve to be punished like you're accountable enough to apologize when you're wrong you know, those those are just some of the first things that just you know first thought best thought type of thing that come to mind. Yeah. Uh, we would say that's uh, that's along the lines. Amali, Christine, Eva. I was, I'm yeah. like lost for words right now because I think it's a whole genre of things from birth to at least when they're eight. Oh, you froze. Seen that you have to try to, like you said, lead, drastic, said lead by example and take into accountabilities for your action as you go along in parenting journey because every parent is not perfect and we make mistakes and we also have to um, learn by those mistakes and teach our kids that it's okay to make mistakes. You recognize your mistakes and you you move forward and try to do things better. All right. All right. Christine, you want to go next? Yeah, for sure. Um, so I think where I kind of go with this is, I, at least how I've been doing it myself, is um, kind of cleaning up as I go, <laughs> right? Like, I just finished a retreat, and part of this was, like, relationship stuff. And I put my kids in there. I always put my kids in there. And then I sent it to them, which was just kind of like – you know, like she said, I haven't always made the best decisions and I, I make some mistakes and sometimes it impacts them negatively, but no matter what, I love them. I just love them so much, you know, and they're, they're what really gives me hope in mankind and they're my favorite people. So being accountable, like she said, like I'm not perfect and I'm living my own life as I'm parenting and I'm, I'm, you know, tripping over things as I'm still raising kids. So the accountability piece for me is just being honest about that and like one thing that's really important in, to me and my values is not protecting my kids from every bad thing that happens because I, I want them to have some kind of resiliency and have a realistic view of what life is like and relationships are like and kind of exposing them to things but also giving them a chance to process it to talk about it doesn't always work but those are my thoughts definitely I mean Eva well, you just see a picture. <laughs> so if Eva wants to go, she can go. This is your time. Anybody on Facebook, Mike, want to chime in in the comment section? We'll give a second. Okay, well, I guess not. So when we say accountable parenting, the first thing we, we want to discuss and we always you know, because we have sessions about accountable parenting. So the first thing we really touch on is, did you build a support system to support you in raising your children? And that's one of the things we, we, we talk about all the time, meaning that's the framework. When you got pregnant, when you 
do you have people around you who are going to be honest with you and help you while raising your children? Or are you trying to do it alone? Or are you trying to be, you know, a warrior? Because the best you can be is with your great, with great support. And a lot of people take pride in, you know, doing the single parent thing. And really a lot of us aren't single parents because we have a, we have a network of people helping us support our children. So the most important thing is to find that network. If somebody, let's say a male, the, um, the father or the mother didn't step up, you find somebody next, next man up, you know what I mean? But you need supportive friends, you need supportive, a supportive environment first when it comes to being a accountable parent. You know, it's, it's all about, part two is a, it's acknowledging your strengths and their strengths and their weaknesses and acknowledging your strengths and weaknesses. Obviously, when a child is one to about five, you know, you're really, you're really put, pouring a lot into them and it, the relationship is kind of one-sided because you're nurturing them and it, you know, they're not as active and they're not willing participant to build the relationship as much as they will be when they actually get older. So you need that outlet from other people. You need that connection from other people. But in doing that, you need to acknowledge where you need the support and where you feel you don't need the support. And you need to really identify that in your children too, where they need the support and where they don't need the support. So that's very important. And then it's, can you acknowledge what Drastic said? Can you acknowledge where you went wrong? Because that's the biggest thing. You know, we were raised, if you know, you maybe 35 and up, you were raised in an environment where, you know, you're seen but not heard. And not saying everybody's parent was like that. My, my parent wasn't even like that, but- My, par- my parent was. Yeah, a lot of parents <laughs> were like that. So. <laughs> You know, whether they was wrong or right, you was always being disrespectful. So do your children have voices? Are you ever able to hear them and acknowledge where you went wrong and humble yourself and say, listen, I was wrong. And you have the floor speak and tell me where I could correct this. Are you having a conversation? Or are you just, are you being a dictator? Are you a parent that truly just believes you're truly nurturing the spirit of your child by silencing them every time, even when you're wrong? And that's one thing. Uh, is everybody that's raising your children on the same page? You know, yeah. are we on the same page? Do they have the same guideline? Now, obviously, you're going to fight and fuss about different values and things that come up because you're not going to be aligned all the time, but is the destination the same? Because if you have the same destination, you always can find a solution when everybody's not on the same page, you're on the same page because you know y'all walking towards the same place. And whoever has the fastest way to that place obviously has more to say and you know you follow their lead so that'd be one of the one of the things and then we also ask do you understand that you're raising your children in the developmental stage they're not adults they're not expected to you know make have the same consciousness that we have they're not expected to have you know to be crucified for mistakes that adults make and we see it all the time adults give passes to their friends their spouse talking about they make mistakes, but they're really hard on their kid for the same thing. And how we hard on kids that are developing and not hard on our adult relationships when those people are already fully developed. And yeah, do we, do we, do they get nurtured? Do they grow? Can they learn something? Of course. But again, if you're hard on your kid about it, you probably should be harder on your friends about it. And then are you mindful that, being account- an accountable parent is a relationship. What's the aim of being a parent as a whole? Is to build a, a relationship with your child. So eventually, y'all want to be on the same page and building a relationship with your child. So you first have to understand the relationship. And I always tell people, like, you know how some kids, they m- monopolize every TV in, in every house? Yeah. Like, they come in your room, turn the cartoons. They go, <laughs> they go to the, the living room, turn the cartoons. They go to the... Their siblings' room, turn the cartoons. And we kind of like, you know, let them watch it, let them watch it. But it's a relationship. So your kids should learn learn your likes and dislikes as well. They should sit and watch some of the shows. I'm not saying the graphic shows, but I'm saying some of the more age-appropriate shows with you to let them know your likes and your dislikes and have them sit through those shows to understand, like, we got to spend time doing what you want to do, and we also got to spend time doing what I want to do. We're building a relationship. And that's very important because a lot of kids are self-centered and we need to really show them that there's other people involved in our relationships early. And once they have that clear understanding early, they're able to nurture their relationships. So 
with saying all of that, I know is a, a mouthful. What do y'all think? Um, I would say that you touched on some some things that um, you know, the way I move naturally, you know what I'm saying, without even taking this type of stuff into consideration, you know what I'm saying? I got a son, I got a thirteen year old son, my, my my one and only child, and I was just with him um, you know, yesterday. And uh he got a smart watch that I noticed on his arm as we were hanging out with each other that towards the end of the night I think I think he might have lost it or he might have misplaced it amongst his stuff or something like that. But my initial response is like, yo, I'm not even going to get you, get upset about that. You know what I'm saying? I'll buy you another one if I have to. Because just recently, I lost the key. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a grown man. So, like, you're 13 years old. I can't expect, I can't hold you to a higher standard than, you know what I'm saying, than myself realizing that I'm capable of making the same mistake, you know? So, you know what I mean? Like, when you touched on that, um, not holding our kids to higher standards than we hold ourselves or hold our friends to when they're still going through that developmental stage, that... You know what I'm saying? That that reminded me of that. And then the fact that we're cultivating these relationships with them. Um, most of the time when I'm around him, I, I let him uh, capitalize the TV. Like, you want to play the video game? Play the video game. You want to watch your kid show? Watch your kid show. You know what I'm saying? But uh, this uh, yesterday in particular, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I was watching a, a movie that I thought both of us would enjoy. It's like the last half hour of the movie. And he's like, yo, I'm going to just go in the other room and watch the TV. And I'm like, nah, it's only a half hour left. Like, we're going to spend this time together, you know? And normally I wouldn't even take that approach. But, you know, being that this is a movie, it's at the tail end of it. Like, nah, let's let's have this bonding time. And then, you know what I'm saying, after this is over, you watch whatever you want. Definitely. Yeah, the, the, yeah our, our, our main goal should give our children the tools to be well-rounded adults. Like, as he said, there's a, they, they are developing and there's, 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 there's times in their lives when they're developing more, well, differently than, as you know, they get to preteen, teenager, young adult, you know, so on and so forth. But our job is to give them the tools, is not to control them, is not, we want to we wanna make, we want to make sure that our kids are critical thinkers. We want to make sure that our kids are making sound decisions um, that they can actually live with, right? Because it's ultimately their life. Um, and it's a lot of teaching understanding and less projecting because that's what we do too right like you 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 gave the example drastic of your son losing his swap his smart watch and you you know misplacing your keys and understanding that things can happen right yeah. but you know a lot of times some other parents can look at it like they 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 lose stuff they don't want their kid to be a version of them so they're harder on them because they they they, they don't want them to turn out the way they are you know what i mean so yeah. it's really important that we understand like know the difference and we can still guide our children and teach them so that they could be better versions of ourselves too. And, but just understand like, and, and have the understanding that you may, you, you, I misplace things too. This is what I do so that I can be more mindful. And this is maybe what you can do as well. You know? So it, it's, it's important to really be mindful as you're parenting because we have jobs, we have other people in our lives. There's so many outside influences that can dictate what type of parent we're going to be. So you need to know. What are you thinking, Amali? You look deep in thought. I am a guilty parent of being hard on my kids because I don't want them to be in the same situation I've been in. I don't want them to go through the same things I've been through. I don't want them to go down the same path I went through. So I'm a little harder on them, but I also give them that room to grow, the room to make mistakes, the room to come and tell me what's on their mind, not to tell them, oh, you a kid, I don't want to hear what you got to say. You go in your room. Because that's what my parents, my mom, well, my mom used to do. You know, seen but not heard type of situation. And... I'm a little hard. My daughter used to say, Ma, why are you always so hard on me? Because I always tell her, I want you to be better than me. To this day, I had a conversation with her because she started school, actual college classes today. And I was like, you got to do good, pay attention, da, 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 da. She was like, Ma, I know you're always so hard on me. It's that I just want you to do good. You know what I mean? And I... One time she told me, she was like, Ma, you treat me like if I'm six years old, I'm 18. I have to make my own decisions. 
You know what I mean? I have to follow my own part, path. And it shocked me because that's what I'm teaching her to do, but I'm still scared to let her go. Definitely. You know, and, and it's, it's so hard for me, like very hard. Like now she's in college and I'm like, I want my baby home, but I have to let her go. And it's very, it's very hard for me. But I always tell my kids, no matter what it is, how you feel, you need to come talk to me because I didn't have a voice when I was a child. So I want them to have a voice. Definitely. Now, and we can sit down and discuss things. And certain, some of my friends used to be like, well, why are you raising your kids like that? I'm like, why not? Why, why shouldn't I? You know, I don't want them to be afraid to come to me with anything or to go to their father or to go to their grandma or their grandpa about anything. Definitely. So I want them to be outspoken and I want them to, I don't want anybody, especially an adult, to dismiss them. Oh yeah, when you, when you teach them to use their voice at home, they'll have their voice in the, uh, when, they, when they leave the house. So that's the most important, right? They, get, they practice at home so that they can exercise their voice when they leave. And feel comfortable mm -hmm. exercising their voice and advocating for themselves. That's really important. And that's one thing that, you know, we didn't really, Aziz didn't really get into details about, but really we're teaching our kids to advocate for themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So even if we do something wrong, they're not really feeling things that are happening. They have the platform and the space to have that conversation. And then we as a parent have to be mature enough and put our emotions to the side, listen to what's being said and make the necessary adjustments. And, mm -hmm. I, I, and, and as much as a lot of people say, you know, I wanna hear what my kid has to say, but when your kid is telling you that you're not being the best to me or the best version of yourself or I don't like when you do X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. it stings, it hurts. It's, it's, you, there, there's gonna be some type of emotion, but you don't have to react to that, right? You can just, yeah. if, it, it's like, it's twofold. It's like, you want your kid to have a voice, right? But that comes with all sorts of things. You mm -hmm. can't stifle them. Like you can't say, hey, you could only say X, Y, and Z, but everything else you have to keep to yourself. You know what I mean? So when you uh, give that, that platform for your children, it really opens up the floodgate. And it's like, and then you have to kind of, you set boundaries within and you have those conversations, but everything's game at that point. Yeah. So when yeah. a parent says that, you know, they have to be mindful that all that comes with it. Yeah. I think I think you made a good point, Amali. Like, are you listening? Uh -huh. Your daughter told you, listen, I'm 18 years old. You treat me like I'm six. And in a nutshell, not to be disrespectful, but fall back. You know, like, that's what she's saying, because you have to yeah, trust and, and, I, and I did, because, yeah, because when she told me that, right, mm -hmm. it, it shocked me, but I'm glad that she told me that, because I want her to speak her mind. I always tell her, speak your mind, no matter what. But that particular part shocked me, and I said, okay, you're right, baby. You're 18, and I have to let you go. Okay, I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you be, but if you need me, you know I'm here. If I'm a phone call away, anything happened, you know I'm that crazy mom that would leave my job to come get you wherever you are. You know what I mean? But that really shocked me because it was true in a sense. You know, I'm growing her up to be independent, not to depend on nobody, going out into the world, being a um, upstanding citizen, a, a good friend, respectful per person, but yet she's still my baby, yeah. you know? So it's kind of hard to let her go. And then I want to let her go. Well, you have to let her go. So I, she's going to leave. <laughs> and I did let her go. And I cried. And that night I cried and cried. I'm always crying. I cried and cried and cried and cried. But I know that was the best for her. And now that I let her go, I told her, I was like, I will always worry about you. I will always think about you. I will always want to make sure that you're okay. So we came up with a solution where she will call me every other Saturday. 
and I will call her. The Saturdays that she don't call me, I would call her to give her that space now that she's in college, you know? But she don't wait for that Saturday. She calls me every day. <laughs> and we talk and we have long conversations. And like, she asks me so much different things and I'm open with her about everything, everything, even stuff She'll ask me about stuff that I've been through when I was young, and I would tell her everything. And I feel that we have an even better relationship now, now that I let I let her go. Well, oh. she she kind of she kind of just walked out. I think we yeah, use, pretty much. <laughs> we use we use let because we want to feel like we have some type of control. But you didn't let her. Yeah, she, she, was was yeah, she made a choice. <laughs> she yeah, made a choice. Yeah. But um. <laughs> Let's go back to, to the support system. Let's but go back to I'm the support glad. system. Yeah. The support system. Mm -hmm. Do y'all prioritize the support system when y'all are talking about raising your children? Or y'all did y'all prioritize y'all support system? Uh me personally, I would I would have to say negative, you know what I mean? Yeah. And um not on purpose. That's just how the that's just how the cards, you know what I'm saying, fell. So like when I when I when I had my son, you know what I'm saying, me and his mother were married at the time. So, you know what I'm saying, we, we had a collective group of uh people that we were all in communication and contact with. Mm -hmm. And you already know when that when relationships like that break up, you know what I'm saying? Some friends go this way, some go that way. So, you know what I mean, as a result, I don't necessarily have the support system, you know, outside of, you know, my father who has his own health problems at the time. But uh yeah, so that and, and then you know what I'm saying there's there's other challenges that fall with that as well because like if you don't already have a, a support system established like you're talking about your child you're not trying to find new people to you know what I'm saying to be looking after your child you know what I'm saying who whose well being you're concerned about you know so I mean when you when you hear support you hear do you hear like just friends because like it can be it can be every teacher is getting in, it's getting in contact with every teacher. Is finding mentors. If you have a daughter and you you're a single father, it's finding women that you admire and you respect to actually help help with the, you know the 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 feminine side of of raising raising your daughter. And if you're a female with just you know male children, it's finding a a male role model or somebody that they can talk to to get the other perspective of everything. I mean, it can be support can be a variety of things. Yeah, we are talking about a tight knitted group in a village with dealing with your friends and your spouse. But beyond that, it deals, you know, it deals with the world. You know what I mean? Like there's a community. I couldn't do much without my mother finding out. Yeah. Why? Because she had this, she acknowledged that she needed a support. You know what I mean? She acknowledged that she, you know, she needed to trust people outside of herself because she had to work. She, she doesn't, she doesn't have eyes everywhere. But then she found the way to have eyes everywhere. You get what I'm saying? And that was the way that they, they, they lived in their support. And that's something we can take from, you know, that time, that time frame. Because to have, just to have people around watching, having people around that, that understand where your child's trying to go and understand who your child is and supporting them in their dreams where you don't have the, 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 the know-how and don't have the framework and sometimes don't even have the patience. You have friends that are honest with you. That's telling you you're being a bad parent. Yeah. That's able to literally say that to you. You know, your child, your child has a learning disability. They really need, they really need support. You don't take care of your, you don't, you don't take care of your children to the highest standard. You're running the streets a little too often. You have people that are like gonna be there for you to actually get you on the right path and make you the best parent possible because that's the most important thing. We could believe we're anything. We need a collective bunch to really say, okay, what 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 are you really to, willing to put to the side to actually establish a great support system for your children? And I don't know if the men, and I guess the men could chime in on this one too. But I know, as a girl, then turning into a woman, you're taught that you know your kids are supposed to be everything, right? And you're supposed to take on this responsibility as a mother and not really, you never really hear about mothers need support too, right? Like as, as I got older, I realized that it's crash and burn and I get old real quick, 
right? If you think as a parent that you need to be doing everything or you should be doing anything, you're crazy because you, you're going to burn out really quickly. But I went into parenting thinking that I was supposed to take on all this responsibility and then the guilt of if I didn't, then I must have not been the parent. But I realized over time that I'm a better parent by having people in my life, having people around who can support the process because I can't be everywhere at every time. I can't be everything at every time. I can't, you know, like there's certain things that as much as I would like to be there, I can't physically, mentally, you know, we, we all work. There's all, there's all these things, responsibilities that you have as an adult. But going into it, I thought I was supposed to be superwoman. And superwoman at the time meant taking on all this responsibility. But I learned superwoman is really assessing the situation and knowing when to say you need help. You know, that, that's the strength in it. And I just want to know, like, from a male perspective as well, like, how do you, when you went into parent, when you went into parenting, did you have these ideals about what type of father you were supposed to be and the responsibilities for to have? And even the women on the panel, like, did you feel the same way that I felt that you had to take on everything and not, not be honest about when you needed help because that meant that you were like a weak parent or not a good parent? Before you go into that drastic, Mahogany wants to know, do you trust your choices at this point? Um, your your, your, your decision-making when it comes to people. Yeah, I think I'm a pretty good uh, judge of character. You know what I'm saying? Overall, yeah. Okay. So now you can answer the question. We can get back to that, but you can answer Jerry's question. Okay, so uh, I think there was about two or three different questions within that within that statement. But um, basically, um, I first thought that popped in my mind as Jerry was speaking was that there's generally, you know what I'm saying, and I'm speaking in general, there's a difference with specifics. But generally speaking, women are more uh, oriented towards getting those support systems and groups, you know what I'm saying? Because, for example, when, when women are girls, you know what I'm saying, when they're not even grown adults yet, they're, all, they're taught, you know what I'm saying, you're going to the mall, you're going to the store, make sure you got your homegirl with you. Make sure you go in a group so that y'all safe. You know what I'm saying? Little boys is like, all right, we out here, rolling dolo state to state, you know? And then um, a lot of times, especially if young ladies um, have babies early while they're still young, you know what I'm saying, they, they understand the importance of having their friends around to help them babysit and different things of that nature, you know what I'm saying? But as a man, it's like, you know what I'm saying? The goal is, all right, go to work, provide, you know what I'm saying? Make sure, make sure that, that, you know what I'm saying? Those, uh, those, those, uh, you know, those things that, that are needed are, are, are required. So I think I'm, I'm, I'm answering, uh, Jerry's question and saying that, and, you know, overall, as far as do I, did I feel like, uh, did I have an ideal about support system and stuff? I probably took that stuff for granted and didn't even, and it wasn't even, it was an afterthought, you know? It wasn't even on the forefront of my mind at the time. How about you, Aziz? Oh, me as a, as a man? Oh, yeah, go being, being a parent. You already, know, you already know I believe in, you know, Team Village. I know, so, but I, I, I just went. I do so know what is, you Obviously, I live, breathe, dream, love is a group journey since I was young. So I always believe, like, there's no way, there's no reason to stress yourself out when you're supposed to your job is to find the right people to be around your ch children and raise your children with. I've always thought that when I had friends or when I had anybody I was close with, we was raising our children together. That was not even a, an option. And anybody that didn't see it that way, I wasn't really dead set on having a strong long-term relationship with. Because those are the, those are the, that's what really happens. Those are your prized possessions. If you don't trust them with your prized possessions or you're not going to be a part of, you know, raising my children with me. What's the, what's the point in even being around each other? It's cool to hang out, it's cool to have fun, but at the end of the day, what is that getting me if we don't have strong stability? So obviously, I strongly believe, like I, I was raised by a single mother, and I believe it's our, it's our job as men to learn from the women, just like it's their job to learn from us. We don't have to, we don't have to be defined by our roles based on gender. So, if you, if you have anybody in your life, I don't care who it is, you should be learning their strengths and admiring their strengths and trying to implement it into your life. What's the whole point if you can't influence each other? So my whole biggest thing is there, yeah, if I seen women really going out there, really making sure that they took care of business and made sure their kids was in, their best, in the best place to succeed, I always wanted to be the type of father that did the same thing. Now, obviously, 
if I attach myself to a woman that was better at it, I, I, I obviously would take a back seat and let her and see what she needed me to support her in. But at the same time, I had a clear understanding of the destination. So that would be my standpoint on that. Anybody else? Molly? No. Oh, Christine? Yeah. She says, no, I'm going to go. I have a <laughs> yeah. I love I love how thought provoking some of the stuff you guys say is. I just love it. I uh, was like, whoa! I didn't see it going there. That's rad. Um, no, God, no. Me and my ex husband, when we had our kids, um, I think we thought we were gonna have a lot more support than we did. Okay. And like, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so we thought the grandparents were going to help. We thought like we were going to have a lot more and we didn't. And I, I actually feel like that was one of the main things that um, drove us to kind of separation was that it was, we never really had a break. We were 24 seven parents. And um, when you have little, little kids, it's, it was, it was really hard on us. And it tended to be easier after we divorced because we both got a little bit of a break. Uh, and as far as community, no. And as far as support, very little. So I love that you mentioned that. And that's definitely an area um, I could get. I could use some more support. I am a single mom. I would love more support. Uh, but I'm with you. Like, I'm just kind of used to doing it all. I do share custody, so I don't have to do it all. But um, when it's at my house, I have to do it all, right? Um, anyways, yeah, that, those are great points. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the number one point. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. But everyone has friends now, so that can always change. You know what I mean? Like if you if you call if someone's truly a friend, then they should be able to help you support like with your kids, right? Yeah. Like how could you somebody truly be a friend and it's really why why are they a friend? You know what I mean? Like if they mm -hmm. can't transition over to that part of your life because being a parent is a big part of who you are. I mean, being a single parent, like my mother had to work extra shifts sometimes. Yeah. You know, like if she didn't have somebody she can call up and ask to babysit, how is she putting food on the table? You know, like as parents, we have so many other things to worry about because we're trying to make ends meet all the time. We're trying to make sure that we, our, our children have the emotional needs they need and things of that nature. We always thinking about our kids. We always have the thought process of, you know, if you're obviously a responsible parent, you're always, thinking about giving your be your child the best life possible. Are you giving your child the best life possible and you're emotionally unavailable? Or you, you don't have the you don't have the capacity to actually be patient with them because maybe you have five kids, maybe you have four kids. And how could you really nurture them if you don't have the support necessary for yourself? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like you're not even reaching out. You should be seeing, you know, some type of therapy, some, something. You should have some some other support to ground you. So you come home, you're, you're, you're their best. Because I know my mother sometimes screamed at us and it wasn't even our fault. It had nothing to do with us, you yeah. know? But I was fortunate to have a parent, one. I was the, you know, obviously I was the one that didn't keep my mouth shut. So I was the one that held her accountable. <laughs> so I was like, this got nothing to do with me. So we'll argue for a good two hours and my brothers would tell me to shut up and be quiet. And I'm like, no, it's wrong. It's abuse. I was the smart mouth and I, I kind of knew my worth early and my mother had a hard time with me. But at the same time, she apologized though. I did have a mother that came back and was like, listen, I was wrong. I shouldn't have took it out on y'all. It was a long shift. I was tired. I was on two hours rest. I come home and this is what it is. And only took was one little thing to take me off and then I went off and y'all don't deserve that. So I was actually raised in an environment where you can voice your opinion. And, you know, I got told to shut up a bunch of times and didn't do it, but I was raised that way. So I think it's very important to have the support because you could go crazy. And for lack of a better word, yeah, you'll lose your mind. And then some things are unforgettable and unforgivable. You know, we like to say everything's everything's going to be forgiven, but people remember things and your relationship would never be the same if you actually push your child away in a, in a certain way. They'll never forget it. Never also, forget too, it they, they, they carry on those bad habits and they in turn become that to other people as well. 
So you're leading by example. So if you want your kids to have the best shot at being a healthy adult or, re or a reasonable adult, you have to set the example. Let them know that even though I work two jobs to put food on the table, it's never your fault that I have an attitude. It's never okay for me to scream at you for no reason. If those things are not okay. And you, te you teach them that helps with their self-worth as well. Because if your parent's not doing it, then they will know that they shouldn't accept that from other people. What if they, you know, if a, a female is married to a, a man who is nasty after work or a, a, a man married to a female who comes home and a woman comes home and she's annoyed about work and she takes it out on him and he thinks that's okay because his mother did it to him his whole entire life. Yeah. It's not okay. Definitely. Yeah, good point. I mean, Mahogany had a, had a good question from the side. She said, sometimes people don't, I mean, didn't want children on their, of their own because they didn't want that type of responsibility. Basically, they didn't want that type of responsibility, so they show up in other ways. Basically, uh, does that mean that they're not, you know, good friends because they're not showing up, you know, for your kids because they didn't want kids? Oh, their... I see what you're saying. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I would say definitely. Like, I want kids. So just like I got to have that discussion with my partner, I'm having that same discussion with my friends. You don't have to have that responsibility from afar. I mean, but when you're around me, it comes with my kids. So that's, that's already, you already know that, just like it comes with my spouse, just like it comes with my other friends. Like, if you think of yourself as still a singular entity, that's where the problem comes. You're everything, that, you're everything that you surround yourself with. So anybody that's not willing to accept that, that's where first conflict happens. So when we generally talk about children, yeah, if a person is singular and they want, you know, they, they always wanted to live a lifestyle without children, then they probably should find other people that kind of have that if they don't want that responsibility when it comes to their friends, because they might be the person that is available to watch the children when, they, when you need support. You know, yes. maybe me and maybe me and my wife need to go out and 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 really talk about how we have to, you know, work work together to raise these children. We haven't had a day off, and we haven't had time off, and we're bickering and fighting, and our relationship is falling apart. And it's not fair for anybody. It's not fair for our friends. It's not fair for our kids. Definitely not. And you might be that person that needs to step up and say, "Listen, I watch the kids tonight. Go out and really, you know, sit down, and I'll see y'all tomorrow." Like really go out, spend a night out, and really get yourself self together. So that marriage is not wrong. You never know. So yeah, I'm saying when we have friendships, they should be willing to sign up for anything we involved in. Other than that, they'll they'll, they'll breed resentment. Yeah, and that's true because when I was in my um, late teens, early twenties. I didn't want no kids at all. And now I have three, but my friends were having kids and I valued their friendship. So I love their kids. Like if their kids were mine, I helped take care of them, change pampers, take them to the park, you know, because it's not my fault that the kids are here, but I still love their parents and I love them because they came from their parents and I, I helped out. You know, and, you know, I was made godparent, you know, godmother to a lot of them. And then it helped me in the long run when I started having kids on my own. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, anytime I feel you have to, you have to um, split, split time with people that really don't get along or really ain't signing up for the whole of your life, it, 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 can't, it can't be the greatest of bonds. You even have two friends that don't like each other and you can't have them in the same room. It becomes, it stifles the, the type of relationship you have with each person because you can't have them around each other. So when you invite one person, you can, like it just destroys a lot of the foundation. But when it comes to your children, I mean, your children are a part of who you are. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're gonna need that extra push. And maybe they're not showing up to babysit the kids. Maybe they're, they have insight on how you can be a better parent. So maybe they they be that person to still pull you to the side when you ain't showing up as the best parent possible. You know or making I mean? sure that you're or making sure you're taking care of yourself as well. Just okay. like, you know, making sure that you are not so so engrossed in being a parent that you don't even know who you are anymore. You know what I mean? Like you need those friends as well to pull you back. Like you're you're a parent, but you're also 
this person and you know what I mean? Like you, you used to have hobbies and you used to have interests and you, you need those people in your ear too because again, kids can monopolize all of your time if you, if you allow it, you know what I mean? And sometimes you need that friend to kind of pull you aside and say, you know, you need to be thinking about, about yourself, caring about yourself because if you're 100%, then you could be 100% a better parent. Definitely. But as far as like, I mean, Mahogany, you did make a good point about, yes, what if your friends don't want kids? But the reality with that too is the connection is not going to be as strong, especially when now I can maybe be, not, not really, but as when your kids get older and they are very independent and they don't need you to do much, you do have more adult time. So maybe they could fit in that, that and, and maybe in that space. But between the ages of like, from baby all the way to like 16, like, we won't have a strong connection. And then what we, things are going to pick up when, when the kid is 16, now we could all hang, hang out. My interests may have changed. You know what I mean? So yeah, when, if you have children and your friends don't, and you don't really want to be bothered with children, the connection may not be as strong and both people involved will have to understand that. I mean, in back, based on what Jerry's saying, there's, there's a question we also ask is like, how could you expect your children to change the world if you're not, willing to be the change within the world for them. You know what I mean? So how do, like, we, 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 we tend to feel we're protecting our child. What, was, what I'm saying is we tend to believe we're protecting our children. When we come home and we're stressed out from work and we don't let them in on that, or a relationship goes sour and we don't have that discussion with them. You know what I mean? Like, you, that's how you allow your, like, Christine mentioned being resilient and her children being more resilient. Mm -hmm. But they don't really have to go through the pitfalls of life to really build up that resilience. They can just have those discussions and watch us problem solve. And we always fear for a burden in our children. But if we're problem solving with our children, it's not a burden. Yep. How could we, listen, right now I'm really, this what's going on. I'm trying to figure out how to pay the bills and actually put food on the table. <laughs> you know what I mean? You sitting down talking to your child. That's why I'm stressed out right now. And a lot of children are like, yeah, they're looking at it like, why are you so upset? And you refuse to tell them. Mm -hmm. So they have no clue. But you build the resilience, the resiliency, by actually having a discussion with them. This is my, this is my dilemma. This is not something for you to solve, but how do you feel we should solve this? And just talking about it. You know, all these people talk about venting. But they have children or little people right next to them, and you'll be surprised how much they know and how much they understand and how much they can possibly give you a, a simple solution because kids are so pure. They're looking at you like, all you can do is do this. We'll eat X, Y, and Z for, for dinner and breakfast and X, Y, and Z. Once you realize, oh, I don't have to fix them a whole gourmet meal at this particular time while I'm struggling, they're sitting back like, we're, we're like, okay, then we can just do that and then we can pay the bills because having shelter, but having food, they're equals, they have an equal importance. We could find a way to do both. You know what I mean? And you never know what they're thinking because you're not bringing them into the discussion. And a lot of us are so scared of burning in them, having them go to school, having them flunk out, have, like they have a lot of kids stuff on their mind. So they don't need our stuff, but we're not burdening them. We're actually bringing them in and brainstorming with them because it's their life too. And we lose track of that. So how could we ask them to change the world and, and have discussions and have great relationships, but we're not doing the same ourselves. I agree with that. And I, you said something earlier and um, it's not that I wasn't, you know, like I grew up with a single mom and I, I it's like generational in my family, it seems. Um, and how my mom still tells me to parents is um, it's none of their business what you do. Mm -hmm. And I grew up like that. Definitely. It was none of my business what was happening in my life. And um, <laughs> I mean, and, and some crazy stuff happened in my life and it was none of my business, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I refused to do that. I have refused to do that. But I was also thinking uh, when you guys were talking, this kind of balance thing. So I usually have my kids Sunday through Friday morning and then their dad has them on the weekends. And this has been for, we've been divorced like eight years now. And, um, 
So when you're saying that, I was like, oh, why do I have so many friends without kids? And it's because on the weekends, I don't have my kids. And my weekends is also my free time. So during the week, I just, you know, I work and I parent and, and I, I really do do that all alone. And then on the weekends, I kind of blow off steam with my friends and play. Um, so it's really, it's kind of interesting. It's not all perfectly fitting, but I would love to have more family and, and family friendly activities with my friends. And especially now that my kids are teenagers, I think the support is more than ever. Definitely. Yeah, because they're really, I feel like the community yeah. raises kids at this point anyway. Like I've made my impression. I'm still doing it, but not as much, but it's really going to be the teachers, the coaches, the friends, the friends, parents, like during the adolescence and teenage years, it's a lot less about me and a lot more about the tribe and who's in it. The outlet. Yeah. Okay. So Marjorie said, um, so true. I allowed them, she allows them to see her successes and failures, failures. She also said they discussed it and they asked questions which is great. I didn't always do that with my, like there were certain things that I just didn't discuss because I, my parents did it with me and I, it was a burden and it was a lot to take in. And it was, I, I, I was like forced to grow up, grow up really quickly and think about things that I shouldn't have been thinking about. And I never really wanted that for my child. So I did it. I, there were certain things I kept from her and there were certain things that I was very forthcoming about, but I learned that you, it, it, she has to see both sides of it, right? She can't think that I just make things magically appear, right? And I, things just don't magically happen and I just have all this money and, you know, like it doesn't work that way, right? So I had to, I had to learn how to balance that because that wasn't something that I wanted to do because I was scarred from my own childhood. Definitely. Yeah, so it seems like uh, Jerry and Aziz are taking two sides of the same coin. You know what I mean? And I think the proper balance um, with that is it depends on the age of the child. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, if you in over your head dealing with bills, you know what I'm saying? You're not going to tell your eight-year-old, yo, the light's about to get cut off. Um, you ain't going to be able to play video games later. Have a good day at school. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're going to send them to school stressed out. But if you got your, your, your late teen, you know what I'm saying, and, you know, you got a situation on the table, you might be able to have that type of discussion after you've already – you know what I'm saying, come to a conclusion about, all right, here's a problem, this is the solution. You might not be able to have cable this month, but I got you next month. You know what I'm saying? You already came to a solution for how you're solving that problem, you know? Definitely. That's the way I, I see it. It, it depends on the age of the child, you know? Uh, uh, that's a guarantee. I mean, at five, we're not talking those discussions probably. Four, yeah. five. <laughs> but an eight-year-old, I think they, they can sustain it. I don't think you, you see how, like, you create the scenario where you're just sending them to school. Yeah. I'm creating a scenario where they actually came home and we actually relax and we have an hour or two to talk about it. Okay. To actually process it. To actually have a whole discussion. To actually bring them in. So you're looking at how it may damage your child. I'm looking at how it may actually give a child responsibility and actually tell the child to themselves, like, I mean, show the child, these are things I may have to deal with. These are things. So now you're building them up early to actually deal with these things and brainstorm and have solutions. A part of us as being parents is the main focus is to make them adults. They're adults longer in their life than they are children. How do you make them responsible adults? By showing them how adults should be and preparing them at a young age. No, you're going to still allow them to have, you know, you still, obviously they're still children. So there's still things you're going to allow them to actually enjoy and allow them to deal with and allow them to, you know, exercise. You know, we go into the park. You're not going to, oh, we on our way to the park. By the way, on the way to the park, the lights might get shut off. Yeah, it should right. never be, it should never be a quick, a quick discussion. Yeah. But when you do have time to have that discussion, have the discussion. Do you like my spouse? Like me and your, me, me and your, your mother broke up. Do you like my new, my new partner? Yeah, that's real. Is that too, is that too, for a seven year old, is that too much? No. Cause they have to live in the house too. I know what my son was. Why didn't you like him? Why did like? Obviously, they have to give you a valid reason. You're not just cutting off somebody that you grow in connection with just because your child don't like them. But at the same time, they giving you valid reasons. You got to rethink your relationship. That's a fact. Because they're a part of your life, and we actually look at our children like. Our adult life is different than they than 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 our, our parenting life. 
they're not two different things. We go out and get too drunk and come home, they're affected by it. Yeah. We could try to hide it, but everything we do, they're affected by it. So we got to stop pretending like they're not seeing things. So we all was children once and we seen everything. Let's be honest. We seen a whole bunch of things. So instead of like, instead of having a child piece all this stuff together on their own or shut down or really not talk, why not have all the discussions with them and have a clear understanding? And obviously you're not talking to them like you talk to your friends. You have to understand like what Drastic said, the age group. But you have to be adamant about allowing your child to have a relationship with you. Because just like you're expecting, what are you telling them? Because Amali said there's certain things her daughter might be like, it's none of your business now. Yeah. Because that's what she showed, showed her. I have a choice. I don't have to fill you in. We all do have choices, but you want them to look at it like, listen, this is how I was raised. We talk about things. So everything that's my business is your business. Everything that's your business is my business. But we're giving mixed messages. Oh, well, since you're a child, I should know all your business, but you shouldn't know none of mine. So you got to really deal with your morals and really figure out where does your, where does your, where, what's the difference between your morals and the, your, what you practice as a parent? Because it should be no difference. But you are factoring in developmental stages where they at on development. We don't know if the child has, you know, special needs. Like there's so many facets to this discussion. Obviously, we're having a discussion with a whole in mind. Hopefully, children are healthy. Hopefully, they're emotionally stable. Hopefully, they're mental, they're mentally inept to take care of to take in all the information, things of that nature. But at five years old, when they're asking why, 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 why. I see 20 parents telling their kid to shut up. Yeah. Not because they don't care about the kid, but because they're overwhelmed by other things going on in their life and they can't answer the bunch of why. But that's the time to actually have the discussion with the child when they're exploring the world. Have your answers ready because they're challenging how gifted you are at understanding what's going on in life. And that's that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the discussion should never stop. I think we're having less discussions with our teens because they're closing the doors on us. Yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> so yeah. They're closing their closing doors. Like they're like, I'm not even in it. Like I don't want to hear it. Because they want their independence. They want to show that they can do things on their own. They want to say, You already taught me everything. Let me do what I'm doing. So I would say I'll flip it. I think eight years old, they need to know that. They need to know their video game is not coming on. At 14, they're like, they're gonna find other things to do. Mm -hmm. All they wanna know is their phone bill is paid. That's it, is my phone bill paid. Yeah, word. Yeah, they don't even care for eating. They just want that phone on. Yeah. I don't eat breakfast. <laughs> Oh my you gotta God. argue yes. with them to eat breakfast. Yeah. So I want everybody to really truly consider what it means to be an accountable parent. Because we, we have parents and we always give pats on the back for just being a parent. Just showing up is the bare minimum you could do. Mm -hmm. Being an accountable, accountable parent is preparing your child to be an exceptional adult. And in doing that, you have to look in the mirror and say, am I being an exceptional adult? To be an exceptional adult, you have to have people that are willing to get in your behind when you're not, not pacify your behavior. Yo, you gotta understand, yo, you human. And I'm like, I didn't cheat on my wife, so why are you human by cheating, but I'm not, hum I'm not human when I'm not cheating? Which one is human? Yeah. Because that's mm -hmm. the discussions I have. I'm like, Yo, my wife need to just take me back, yo. You know, people make human decisions. It's, it's a part of who I am. It's a part of my DNA. You know how men do. <laughs> we have these discussions all the time. I'm the guy who sits <laughs> home and I'm like, you comfortable with having your child twice, four times a month? Like, you're comfortable with that? That's cool. 
because I don't think that's an accountable parent. Like minus the amount of times the the the, the your your, your ex wife has the children. Minus that, you have them four times. Minus the the other times that they have them. How are you being supportive? How are you comfortable with that? How we grow up in a society now, we're comfortable with that. But bigger than that too is like, how are your friends comfortable with that? Definitely. Mm -hmm. Like, how are your friends comfortable with you having your, even if they don't have kids? Have you like you don't you don't have to not you you don't have to have a child to know that that's an issue. So the fact that you know you're always available or you that parent, and it's not just men because women can be part time parents as well. And yeah, definitely. you you know every chance you get, you dropping your kid off and you hanging out and. You, you have friends that you party with and friends that, you know, want to hang out with you without your children, but who you should have people around you that's going to say, hey, you know, you went off for three weekends in a row. Like, don't you think you should be doing that? Don't you think maybe you should, you should be doing something with your children? Like, why don't we do something a little family friendly? Like, we, we that's part of accountable parenting, too, is having people around that's going to hold you accountable and not just, just have you around for all the fun times and you know, when you're having those adult times, but also challenging you when you're not stepping up and spending the time that you need to spend with your children. Well, I mean, I, I you know, I, I'll just put myself out there. I was trying to avoid these conversations, but um, to be honest, like I am that parent that sees my child four times a month. You know what I mean? Because there's other factors that you got to consider. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not out there partying. I don't go to clubs. I don't go to bars. I go to work. I come home. You know what I'm saying? I went from being married, being in my son's life every day of his life to, all right, get out the house. I don't want to be married to you anymore. Pay child support, which is enough to pay that mortgage. Plus, I still got my own mortgage I got to pay. You know what I'm saying? So because of the responsibilities, I got to go to work. If I don't go to work, the child support and the mortgages don't get paid. You know what I'm saying? Which leaves little time to spend with my son. Okay, reverse that. If if you was the if you was the parent that was primarily taking care of your son, what would you be doing then? Your son won't eat. No, you just sit home and collect the check. That's enough to pay your mortgage. So so all you literally have to do you all you so have I'm to saying do in reverse in reverse. No no mother. No mother around, just you, and your child. How would you take care of your child? I would have to either develop a support system or I'd have to pay for a support system. Well, it's the same way. It's the same way. You put in the same work. It's just like I never let anybody off the hook because I'm like, somebody's doing it, though. Somebody's sacrificing. Yeah, but when you're at your home, case, you maybe be... she's not sacrificing in that way because she might be sitting home collecting a check. No, I'm, I'm, I'm sure she got. I'm sure she got a job and stuff. So I don't want to leave a wrong impression or nothing like that. Okay. You know what I mean? She's not. She's not just like on the system or nothing like that. But I was saying, hypothetically speaking, when you're collecting that amount of money, that's enough to practically pay your mortgage, if you want to. Which she doesn't. If you want to, you could get a part-time job at Dunkin' Donuts just to have gas money. You could. You know what I'm saying? You could. And and but then you also, got nothing but time could, on your hands. Yeah, you can make the time. You also can make the time. You could also make the time to be involved in your child's life a lot more. You have to get creative. You have to like it, it's something. It's something like purpose. It's something. It's a purpose. Like I always tell people, there's, there's, there, there, there's women that you know that use the system. Sometimes I hear a lot of men talk about the women that use the system, and I'm saying I might, I might be crazy. Because there's not a lot of people that can take me from my child. So I might be a crazy man. Because I'm going to be down and I'm going to be busting my behind to see my child. So that's what I'm saying. It, 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 it is, but let's not just focus on, you know, the broken homes. We're just saying, even when you're having children and you are a single mother and you're doing it alone and you're stressed out we have discussions with people like that all the time and we're like where's your support are you putting in the work to find a support there's other single mothers going through that are you really looking for other single mothers that's actually going through these things where you can drop kids off that can build a rapport that can actually work as a unit just for single parents there's so many movements 
so many Facebook challenges, so many all these things out there. Why are we not starting a single parent movement? We're complacent in, I'm a parent. I want to be a superhero. But you're a better parent if you have support. That's the guarantee. But even to, to, Christi to Christine's point, like you're a better couple if you have support. So it doesn't necessarily, necessarily even have to be single parents. It's just people in general, couples in general that have children, you'll be better, you'll be better for each other if you had that support as well. So it just doesn't stop. I mean, even when you are single, you do need extra support because you don't have that extra person in the home. But even like to Christine's point, she said her husband struggled with the fact that they had no support. So, and there were two of them. So it's, it's important all around. I think that they, everyone takes it for granted or um, like you said, you, people want to play super, super superhero and think that, they, that that comes with parenting, just they have to take on everything by themselves, but it doesn't have to be that way. We make parenting what we, what we, what we need to make it. Definitely. Like, like for me, like when people say, um, your baby daddy, mm -hmm. I hate that term because for me and my ex-husband, I don't consider him a baby daddy. I consider him the father of my kids because even though we are in two separate homes, he is there. I can call him and it's for the moment, he'll drop everything and come to the house to take care of the kids. He takes them Friday, bring them back on Sunday, and I have them during the week. But since they're homeschool, he comes on his break from work to be there with them while they're doing schoolwork on his lunch break. You know what I mean? And it's not even about the child support because I can care less about that. I rather him be there. Yeah with the kids and spend time with them than any money because I work, he work, I can work overtime, he can work overtime, give the kids what what they need. You know what I mean? I'm not, and when I tell certain people, like we have conversations at my job because a lot of the men at my job are on child support and don't see their kids as much. And when I tell them, even though we got a divorce and it's in the judgment, he have these kids certain and certain months much days I'm not, I don't care about that if he want to see his kids seven days a week he'll see his kids seven days a week and they'll be like oh well it's not easy you're a good mom I wish I had a, a mother uh my kids mother were like you and it's just the level of maturity you know and I, I think it's the level of maturity and the level of respect for your kids itself, not even respect for both of you, respect for your kids that the kids need both parents, regardless to what the parents are going through, regardless how much they work, regardless if they have to go hang out with their friends and spend time, it's about the kids. Definitely. You know, and I agree with you on that's, yeah, huh? I say I agree with you 100%. I think, you know, the accountable part of it, and we always say accountable parenting starts before you can have the kids, before it's even conceived. Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not talking to the people we're, we're, we're sleeping with? Mm -hmm. Like, why are we not mindful and thinking, this is the person I actually slept with? In Drastic's case, he, he was married. So things happen through a marriage, things become bitter, things become nasty. And hope some in some cases, you know, the two people can't stand themselves and your, each other. In your situation, you and your partner, you and your ex can actually stand each other. So everybody's yeah, always going to give you a pass because, oh, they can stand each other. But the point is the best interest of the children. Yeah, but at we first... both got that in common. Yeah, when we first got the divorce, it was bad. It was really bad. But we still seem to put aside that part because of the kids. Definitely. I, I didn't care about your feelings. And... I, you, he didn't care about my feelings, but when it came to the kids, it was the kids' feelings and what the kids needed and what the kids wanted. And a lot of people don't seem to understand. They'd be like, oh, you still have feelings for your, your ex-husband. That's why you guys get along so much, get along so well. I was like, no, it's about our kids. And my kids need their dad and they need me. So we have to 
step aside, put aside all those other feelings and hatred for each other and come together for our kids. And that's what we do. Okay. And a lot of people don't understand that. And I don't understand how they don't get it because maybe because it's just simple to us. No, I mean, they, they get it. They, it's, it's, it's just lack of work. Mahogany mm-hmm. acts drastic. Do you have like Zoom? Uh, he's obviously yeah. on Zoom right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm on Zoom right now. Yeah, my, my son don't got a phone right now, though, because, uh, yeah, that's a whole different story. Yeah, he don't got a phone right now, though. So, I mean, I think all of it, all of it is not to, like, bash you because, yeah, you was honest, you started the discussion. Mm-hmm. Everything's about, everything's about, like, this whole discussion is about being a accountable parent and raising the standard just like we, we, we believe in accountable love and we believe in raising this bar when it comes to friendship and when it comes to love, like raise the bar and have those things mean something again. Parents shouldn't just mean we're having children anymore. It should mean we're, we're presently involved in our children's life on a regular basis. You get what I'm saying? You know I mean? That's the mo- most important thing. It is a difficult thing. Like we can talk about all kinds of different scenarios. That's probably why we have our sessions because every situation is unique but we do try to have we do try to have things that are across the board and what's across the board is ethic creativity work love you get what i'm saying like those are the motivators if you don't have that as a parent yeah, then you don't see the re- you're not gonna see the, the time with your children. You're not gonna put in the work. You're not gonna put in the discussions you need to have. You're not gonna go out, get out your own way and realize when you're yelling at them it might be a weakness of yours. You just think they're doing something wrong, they need to be yelled at. But you might not even be yelling at them. But what they did wrong is just the icing on the cake. Do you take a step back and say, Would I have yelled at them if I had a great day today? Probably not. You get what I'm saying? So it's bigger than just, you know, like having a messy divorce or, you know, us coming together and we just focusing on us as adults and who cares what's going on with the kids. It's all about what what means something to you. It's all about being an accountable, accountable person. And in being an accountable person, you're going to be an accountable parent. So you're going to make sure you put forth all the effort with your dying breath to make sure that your children have the best life possible. Also, you're going to put yourself in a position to always be successful in a place to do that because what happens? You don't go out and do reckless things that's going to put you at risk. You don't go out, you be mindful of them at all times. You don't just sleep with random people that you know possibly can't raise their children. Can't raise your children, excuse me. Or wouldn't want to raise a child. So when you have children and you're building that bond with the person, you can't just build the the bond with the person because that's being a partner. Being Being a parent is a whole different facet. It's a whole different aspect of life. And we all wear many hats. But like Amali said, because a relationship crumbles on a partnership level, doesn't relieve you of your duties on a parent level. When you're going through whatever you're going through and you're a single parent and all you have to talk to is your your kids, like bring them into the discussion. Show them what their presence looking like so y'all can find the solution for the future. It's very important to really be mindful and bring, the reason why we have these discussions is not to bash a person, but it's to make them have, to make you mindful of every decision you make because mindfulness leads to fruitfulness. When you're mindful of your actions, you're genuine, you have intention, you do it with the intention to succeed. When you're mindless, 
you're constantly apologizing because you didn't plan what you did. So when it's about being an accountable parent, it's all about the, 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 the stepping up and making sure you step up on a regular basis, showing your kids the person that they could be. They don't have to be you, but if you have to show them at the least you should be me. Yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna say that earlier too. Like, it's not the end of the world if my child ended up like me, right? I mean, I would hope that you know she has things in place where she wouldn't make the same choices because I wouldn't say mistakes because everything I did was a choice. Um, but yeah, if she ended up like me, it wouldn't really be, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But I was able to parent with those things in mind, so I am able to give her those tools so she can make certain decisions that I didn't make or have. A, cer a certain level of self-worth and self-esteem so she could feel better about herself when she's making these decisions. And yeah, if she ended up like me, it's not the end of the world, but that's the, that's the baseline. Like that's where you start and then it gets, it gets higher from there. I'll take it one step further. Like if you see yourself as a great human being, you want your child, you wouldn't mind if your child is you. Yeah, that too. You just know that they're not gonna be. But there's certain things that you learned along the way that you're automatically by default gonna install instill in them. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Like for example, since you, since you got the since you got a village mentality, you know what I'm saying? You're gonna be te you're gonna be cultivating that within your child early, so they might even be able to bi build a bigger or better village by the time they get to be your age. Definitely, mm -hmm. that might be the case. Or might not. They may but be they like I'm tired of having people. Like that's one thing we so fearful like. At the end of parenting, like once they're they, they they're adults, and we're still parenting when they're adults, obviously. But when they're adults and making their own decisions, you could look in the mirror and say, I did my best. It's on them. We're not sitting there saying, based on these methods, your child is going to automatically be something. Yeah. We're saying you're giving your child the best chance to succeed. So when they come to you as adults, you like, I gave you the best chance to succeed. These are choices you made. Mm -hmm. You can hold them accountable. But if you can't hold them accountable because you were an accountable parent, you're going to have that guilt. You're going to have to deal with the fact that you ruined your children. But if you could look in the mirror and say, I gave you the best tools to succeed and you still went off the rails, it's on them. And of course, as a parent, parents and an adult, you're going to hold them accountable. And any which way that you see fit is going to be the discuss based on the discussion you have. They might be humble and being able to take in information, or they might be cursing you out, and you might have to cut ties until the relationship gets better. So they actually, you know, find out who's in this, who's their support, who's been their support, and they realize and they come back. Because obviously, we all know there's different facets of life. Like at some point, as a kid, I was a you know, a crook. Like I used to do not crook in the sense of stealing things, but at a mindset of fighting all the time and being violent. Now, far from it. My mother had to deal with all that. So when I look at her, I'm like, I see the adult I, I'm, I, I am. She sees the child I was. Yeah. So we always have to distinguish between the two. Because yeah. as an adult, I'm challenging her, and she's like, you wasn't always this way. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So we have to be mindful. So that's what I'm taking from my mother's upbringing. I was able to see through her eyes at some point. So now that's what I'm talking to my children about, and that's what I mean about building a relationship. If they can see through your eyes earlier, and you see through their eyes earlier, you have a relationship. So therefore, you're able to navigate as a team versus as just parent-child. Yeah, and I'm glad that, that you brought that up and it came around full circle because accountable parenting is not just about us or our children. It's also about us and our parents as well. Definitely. And acknowledging certain things and, and, and understanding that, like as he said, his mom may see him how he was at 13 versus how he is at I don't want to say your age, 40. but <laughs> at 40, but um, yeah, it's really, it, it's, 
those conversations are important to have with our parents because we kind of stay in this, this I'm the kid and, and you're the parent, but we're both adults at, this, at, at, a, at, a, at a certain point. So the dynamic of relationship changes and we never really truly want to talk about that and it never really comes up. But accountable parenting is not just about us with our children, it's also about us and our parents. And if we really want to have work on that relationship or understand the things that they did or get a better understanding of who they are, or get them to have a better understanding of who, of who you are, then it starts with the discussion about accountable parenting or even talk to them about their parenting skills, you know, and, and have that discussion and and be open to hear feedback on and you know you may think that you were the best kid ever and they're like you were terror you know what i mean like it was really hard to parent you and that the first time you could be hearing that is you know many 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 years later because it never came up in conversation and it was just you, you kind of took it for what it was right but accountable parenting goes around it, 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 it's it's all of that it's, it's it's touching on those things it's touching on being your own parent, it's holding your friends accountable for being parents. It's if you're the aunt, the uncle, you know, you have children around and you're being a mentor, it's about being accountable in those in those spaces as well. Definitely. But you know, it's, it's, it's winding down. Oh, uh, so take it. So um, so I know we kind of did something a little different this week because we did account accountable parenting. We're usually talking about, you know, different types of relationships, but Parenting is a really important relationship. The relationships that we have with our children are really important. And it kind of like segues way into we're having a we're having accountable parenting podcast where we are having parents talk to their kids, interviewing their kids. Like it's kind of more like an interview or a discussion basically with their children about their parent about parenting. And we are also gonna have discussions with our parents about parenting and that dynamic. And we're gonna record it, it's gonna be on our website. So if any of you guys are interested in having that conversation with your children, we'll walk you through it. We'll, we'll give you, you know, a set of questions that we will want you to ask your child or your parent. And then, you know, you could fill in other things in between, but there's certain questions that we want you guys to hit. Um, because it's really important that parenting is a very important job. And it's nice to hear the feedback that we get from our children, the feedback that we get from our parents, the, our parents getting that feedback from us. So we wanted to share that with our viewers and have that opportunity to have that segment rotating on our website. So that's why we did uh, Accountable Parent Parenting. Camille and I did a, did a segment, it's on our website as well. So if you wanna check that out to see what it entails, you can. Um, and then we also have other relationship building sessions, the one-on-one -on -one sessions, we have the friends and couples sessions, and we have the group sessions if you're interested in that as well. That's on our lovesagroupjourney.com website. So all that stuff is there. Um, thank you again for joining the, the, the discussion, even though it wasn't about the relationship that we are used to talking about, we still had a healthy discussion. So if any of you guys haven't shared this, please share it so that I can get out there so people can have this, this, this opportunity to, to hear all the good things that we discussed about parenting and showing up and being the best parents that we could possibly be. So Definitely. that's start my skill. Dialogue. Share, start the dialogue, have these discussions with your friends. Yeah. Like, uh, agree with what we're saying or disagree, at least it starts a discussion. And that's what it's all about. You know, starting a discussion to come to a common ground and figuring out how to walk together. Absolutely. So, but thank you for everyone who shared a story and participated. We really appreciate it. everybody. I loved the topic. It was, it was so thought provoking. Thank you. We appreciate <laughs> You're it. You're welcome. We appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Marjorie. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook and all the four or five people that were on Facebook. <laughs> Bye, guys. Mm -hmm.